Hi everyone, this is Tholin. It's that magical time of the year again as Christmas is approaching. 2020 was a bit less magical though, since the only thing missing from this year is this guy or those guys. But this doesn't mean that we can't have fun and I'm talking about the pure original Nintendo way of having fun. So grab a chair by the fire, get yourself a cup of eggnog and let's enjoy some retro Nintendo Christmas games so that we can make the best out of these well-deserved holidays. Now remember we are talking about retro Nintendo games only. So we are going to start with a Super Nintendo game and I'm talking about Days Before Christmas. Now Days Before Christmas is a platform video game developed by Norwegian company Fancom and published by Sunsoft. It came out in 1994 um, when it was ported to the Super Nintendo and it was released only in Europe and Australia. The North American release was cancelled. The player controls Santa Claus as he races to save Christmas from an evil mouse who has stolen the kids' presents and cursed them with a spell. Santa faces foes such as giant rats, evil toys and living snowmen using his magic powers to turn them all into harmless Christmas presents. He can also collect a power-up that, uh, that makes him shoot flames which melt ice. One of the game's distinguishing features is the Santa's ability to turn into his evil twin, anti Claus. By drinking a cup of tea, Santa transforms into a blue-suited, devilish-looking version of himself. His primary method of attack is swinging his sack of toys at enemies. In a break between levels at several points in the game, Santa flies in his lie and uses his presents he collects to drop them down chimneys in several locations around the world for bonus points. The game had a limited print uh, in this territory that it was released in Europe and Australia, but now it fetches quite a high price in uh, eBay. But you can still get that on an emulator and enjoy some true Santa Claus fun. Moving on. Christmas are not the same without some Christmas movies, and one of the most popular is Home Alone. It came out in 1990 and smashed the box office. Of course, due to its success, there were several video games produced to capitalize on the movie. One of those is the Home Alone video game that came out for the Game Boy. Kevin McAllister is left home alone when his family goes on vacation. He must prevent Harry and Marv, the wet bandits, from breaking into his home, using various household objects as traps or weapons. The Game Boy version of the game, similar to that of the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo one, requires the player to evade confrontation with the wet bandits. As in the Super Nintendo version, the player has to gather various items and then dump them into a laundry suit to deposit them into a safe. Sometimes the player might resort to using those items that the bandits plan to steal against them by dropping them on their heads, as well as instigate certain traps as in the movie. There are four levels, each taking place in a different area of the house and each having a different item that the player must recover. After collecting the minimum amount of items and dumping them into the suit, the player can ac access the basement where the level boss must be defeated before the player can access the safe and lock them in. The third game in our list is Super James Pond for the Super Nintendo. James Pond 2 Codename Robocod, also known as James Pond, is a platforming video game and sequel to the original James Pond. It was developed by the same British teams as the original. The Super Nintendo version was called Super James Pond in North America and Super James Pond 2 in other regions. James Pond is recruited to infiltrate Santa's Grotto, free the captive penguins, retrieve the stolen toys for the cho uh, children of the world and defeat Dr. Maybe. This time, however, due to the greater risks involved in this mission, Pond is given a robotic suit and the codename Robocot. This suit gives Pond superhuman strength and agility as well as enabling him to shred his midsection almost indefinitely and reach otherwise impossibly high areas. James Pond 2 was also released for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. The handheld releases are identical except for the DS version which features a map on the secondary screen. 
All these versions of the game are largely different from that on the original. The graphics have been improved to take advantage of the console's newer hardware, and while the levels retain some of the themes of the original, their layout is entirely different. Also, in the newer versions, the product placement of McVitie's sponsorship has been removed. Another popular Christmas movie is The Gremlins, a movie by Steven Spielberg that also did amazingly in the global box office. There were many games based on that Gremlins movie, but we are going to focus on a handheld one. We are talking about Gremlins, the video game for the Game Boy Advance called Stripe vs Gizmo. In this game you can play either with the Mogwai Gizmo or with the Gremlin Stripe. Depending on which you choose, the gameplay is a bit different, but in the end there is a major confrontation between the two characters. Either playing Gizmo or Stripe, you have to win and you have to beat the other character. There are three available game modes to choose from. Adventure, Time Attack and even Multiplayer when you can connect two different Game Boy Advances and have fun. Our fifth and final game of this list is called Santa Claus Jr. for the Game Boy Color. It is another platform game that came out for this particular system. It features a little boy called Nick whose job is to find all presents that Santa Claus lost. So he must defeat the evil witch and free Santa Claus so that Christmas can commence as usually. Santa Claus Jr. was a PAL released game for the Game Boy Color and it was developed by a German company called Neon Software. It is possibly one of those hidden gems as we can say, which is not that common games that have a good quality. The game prefers to depict the cold winter which awaits outside the bedroom window rather than the cozy indoors of lights and steaming food. I think that this is a unique characteristic of the game that makes it really valuable and worth playing. Now, since it was a limited release to PAL territories only and mainly Europe, it's not that common to find as a cartridge or more importantly as a complete inbox game. Still though, you can download it as a ROM and enjoy it and I suggest you do because it's a beautiful Christmas game. So everyone, that was our list of 5 Nintendo Retro Christmas games that you can enjoy this holidays. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please subscribe and thumb up, follow the channel as we have more content coming soon. I wish you all a happy holidays and an excellent new year.